there's a very famous, really scary phrase from Rudy Giuliani, who said, "The truth is not the truth." Uh, you know, he was he was going through one of his stupid, convoluted sort of things, and he was saying, "The truth isn't the truth." It's somebody's version of the truth, not the truth. He didn't have a a conversation. Truth is about, truth. I, I don't mean to go like. I, no, I it isn't truth. Truth isn't truth. The president of the United States says, "I didn't." Truth isn't uh, truth, Mr. Mayor. Do you realize what I? I, I no, I, no, no, no. This is going to become a bad don't, 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 do, don't, do, don't do this to me. And then we had this thing from Kellyanne Conway, this, this alternative facts. Don't be so overly dramatic about it, Chuck. What it, it, you're saying it's a falsehood, and they're giving Sean Spicer, our press secretary, gave alternative facts to that. It isn't true. I mean, we had a politician once, uh, Moynihan, uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who said everybody's entitled to his own opinion, but not to his own facts. Fake news is somebody lying, and it's pretty easy to tell. There's so many ways now for somebody just to see a story, and if it doesn't sound right, to check it out. Um, fake news is really a false problem. The real problem is badly reported real news. Well, no, it just, he gave it a name, but I mean, we had, we've had fake news forever. I mean, I started out as a reporter in 1842 in, in Arizona and working on a small daily newspaper. And people would call in and they'd say stuff. And, or, you know, I mean, you know they, 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 they think it's the truth. They're trying to sell us something. They're making something up. But what a reporter does, the first thing a reporter does is check the story. You know, um, and so fake news is just is simply a word that Trump has made popular and other people have, have, have seized onto because it's very useful, um, it just means something that's wrong. It's not really a thing. What has changed is that because everybody has such access, you know, via the internet, via, you know, phones, via so many different channels, to think they really know things. And people tell each other lies. And so, the good thing about today is that we can, you know, you can have a story and you can see it live anywhere. You can flash things back. But the bad thing is that we get things wrong at the speed of light. You know, so very few people take the trouble, if they hear something, to check it out. Does it make sense? You know, is it, are the facts correct? Are there enough facts? Is there another part of the story? People don't take that trouble anymore. Trump's whole fake news thing is just simply a way of deflecting, you know, what Hillary Clinton called the deplorables, which I call the despicables. These, it's a cult. These are people who believe no matter what he says. And so Trump has found out, like any good <clears throat> carnival barker, you know, anybody, any, any good demagogue. And so what Trump does is he just makes up his own reality. I mean, he tells, you know, seven, eight, nine lies, total lies a day. And if somebody tells, if somebody, a reporter says what's actually true, he simply brands it fake news. Mm -hmm. And this is an extremely valuable tool for any demagogue anywhere. Uh, Bolsonaro in Brazil, uh, uh, you know, now in Italy, they're talking, I mean, everybody, if they don't like the story, ah, fake news. Mm -hmm. When in fact, it's not fake at all. People these days talk a lot in the news organizations, um, CNN, BBC, whatever. It, it's not anymore the organization itself. It's really the reporter or the, or the, the photographer or the, 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 the person. And so there are some very good journalists on a lot of news organizations. If you get a good reporter who is telling the truth, um, like a lot of people on CNN do, then you've got to demonize the organization. And so, I mean, this, this whole business um, with, with Acosta, Jim Acosta with CNN, Trump, you know, I mean, everybody saw that, that, that famous press conference where he's, you're a terrible man, you're, and Trump banned him from the White House. Well, President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? Mr. President. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Go ahead. CNN immediately went to court, and the court said, you can't do that. 
This is not your house. This is the people's house. This is, you know. You can't ignore the tweets because that's, that's, he's the president and that's the manner he's chosen in which to communicate. But if he says something that's an obvious lie, um, the New York Times started this about a year ago and, and, and it's congratulations to them for doing it. They, they, they will call it a lie. They'll say it's, just, it's not true. He said this, but it's not true. And this is why. The Washington Post has a whole unit um, to, to keep track of his lies. And I mean, I think they're up to 6,000. I don't I can't remember how many. But the problem is they've chosen to use, they call them Pinocchios. You know, uh, you know the, the, the 18th, 19th century story about the puppet that has a long, and his nose gets longer when he tells a lie. Well, it was very funny at the beginning, but it trivializes it. You know, and now they have, uh, there's a new category called a, a permanent Pinocchio or whatever. If, if he's told the same lie 20 times or something like that, then he's, you know, but people get immune to it. You know, a president who was telling a lie and putting, and I'm not exaggerating here, putting the future of humanity at risk. I mean, when he denies climate change and when he sells clean coal and when he does, you know, things that he does and, he's, and he, he does these crazy diplomatic things with, with place, people like, like the Chinese and, and the Russians and the Koreans who can, you know, he is putting the world at risk. Um, that's not funny. Right, well, I mean, the th the, I mean, it gets back to the basics. Uh, people always forget that journalism, reporting, any kind of form of reportage, wh whether you're writing or you're taking pictures, it, it, it's, it's an acquired skill. It's, it's a, it's a, in a way, it's a mission, although that's a little, a little pushy. But, but it's, it's, you can't just do it. I mean, this idea of a citizen journalist, um, you know, I always think of a citizen surgeon who's going to take out my liver. You know what I mean? It's, 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 um, and so a, a, a journalist, a reporter, when he or she covers a story and tells a story, there are elements to it. You have to <clears throat> understand the reality. You have to be close. If you can't really be close, close, you have to be able to find good sources to get you close to there. And then put it together in its context and in an historical continuum. You have to say what happened, but you have to say why it happened, and you have to, if you can do it, kind of look at what's likely to happen next. Um, and that's reportage. And somebody just saying, oh, I saw this or I saw that, that's just, you know, testimony. It's not, it's not journalism. The problem is we have forgotten that the, the, the responsibility lies with the consumer, not the reporter. I mean, if, if, if somebody, when people criticize the media as though there was such a thing, the media, and people say, oh, it's all, I always think of, of a supermarket that's full of food and somebody's standing outside with a pocket full of money and he's starving to death because he doesn't have, take the trouble to walk inside and shop carefully and, and buy nourishing food. It's, you know, I mean, if we can tell the story and we can report stuff, and we can provide the images, and we can provide the background. But if a citizen, a consumer of news, doesn't take the trouble to, to actually listen to what's being said or read what's being said and check it, it's not our fault. My students in Arizona, they, you know, I will, they'll tell me something, and I'll say, what's your source? And they say, the internet. And I say, the internet's not a source, it's a delivery system, you know. It's a big difference. I wrote a book called Escaping Plato's Cave. Um, I mean, Plato was a perfect analogy because he imagined people sort of facing a cave wall and, and with an opening and then reality would go by in these shadows and they would try to, you know, and then, and then people would try to assume what was happening from the shadows and the shadows would leave and then they would think of them again and new shadows would arrive, you know, it was, you know, and so I wrote a book called Escaping Plato's Cave and I was talking to a graduate class at Georgetown University 
and I was talking about what I had seen. I mean, not what I what somebody told me or not what I thought, but I was standing on a hillside in, in Tobago in Trinidad, and I was looking toward Venezuela, and I'm watching this brown, you know, water coming out of the Orinoco River, and, and <clears throat> turning this beautiful pristine turquoise Caribbean brown. And then I look up in the air and there's just hazy dust, you know, and, and it's dust blowing from Africa. So I, I say this and this kid raises his hand. He says, I don't think so. And, I, you know, I wanted to, you know, you know look at the kid. Look, you little puke. I didn't see you there. You know, I'm telling you what I saw. I'm not telling you what I think, you know, but it's it's. It's a problem because people are empowered by what they think is their knowledge. I mean, there's a great line, a Clint Eastwood line from um, from Dirty Harry, the movie Dirty Harry, and you know, excuse me, he says, you know, opinions are like assholes; everybody has one, you know, you know, and I mean, an opinion, if that's what you do, you know. Okay, if it's on the op-ed page, if it's an opinion, you know, there's a value in that, but it has to be seen as an opinion. It's not reportage. In the state of Arizona, there are two universities. One is got a lot of money. It was, you know, they're very good at raising money. They've got a big thing, and they have a school of journalism and communications, and they teach journalism, but also advertising and, 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 and public relations and, and communications. Public relations and advertising is trying to sell something. Journalism is trying to tell something. You know, I mean, it's different. I mean, you have the same skills, you use your fingers to type, you know, and you talk and you use the language and you use cameras and things like that, but journalism is not communications. Journalism is telling the story, getting facts across. News organizations now are run by money people who have never been, have never done the work. They have no idea really what we do. They use the word content. Every time I hear the word content, I want to kill somebody. And also, there's a, a, a move to get rid of people with experience because they, A, they're expensive, and B, they talk back. My point in saying that is today, you get a lot of clueless people in these newsrooms. You get people that have never been there, I mean, you, you listen to the, to the to these people, they're, they're pronouncing names they've never even heard of. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, they, they have no idea. They can't find these places on a map, you know, they say. Or you get people, that's how people get killed. I mean, you get people in the newsroom that say, well, you know, you should go, go up this road. And, you know, and we've all lost friends who've, you know, gone up a road because some idiot in London or New York or, or Paris has sort of said, you know, so it's, it's getting, it's a problem. It's getting a problem that, again, this is not against young people. It's not the fact that you can't get real smart real quick, but experience, you can only learn with experience. Something that, that I always tell my students and tell everybody about this, the first thing any consumer of news has to do is triangulate. You start with one source that sounds pretty knowledgeable. <coughs> then you find another source, you know, hopefully from the mainstream, from, from an organization you can identify. And then you look for a third source that kind of amplifies it. And if, if it's like a tripod, if, you, you know, if, it's, if the story rests on three legs, you can start to believe it.